Hi, welcome to Deep End. My name doesn't matter. Let's dive in. In the Bible, there are two offices mentioned for leadership, elders and deacons. And today I just wanted to take a little moment to talk to you a little bit about elders. There are two words used to describe the elders of the New Testament, episkopos and the presbyteros. The word episkopos is really closely related to the word for visitation. See the same uh, cognate episkos used uh, to describe the visitation of Jesus Christ. It refers almost always to oversight. The Bible connects episkopos, this office in the church, with the shepherding uh, or shepherding concept, which indicates to us that that the person who is an elder or a pastor or a bishop or a leader is supposed to be somebody who is exercising oversight for the good of the people in the congregation. In Titus chapter 1 verse 7 and in Acts chapter 20 verse 28, episkopos and presbyteros are actually shown to be the same position. So let's talk just for a minute about presbyteros as well. This word presbyteros is used 65 times in the New Testament, uh, and it's got three major meanings. The first meaning that is used is in reference to the lay leadership of the Jews, in contrast with the high priests and the priests that served the temple. The second usage is in elders, elders as in the Jewish synagogue, and we see most of them are just uh, older men who have been around for a long time and have been uh, identified as wise people that could lead the people in wise decisions. And the last one, and the one that really concerns us, is the concept of elders in the Christian community, which we see constantly throughout Paul's writings. Paul, on several occasions, admonishes other leaders to establish elders. He spends a lot of time with the Ephesian elders in the book of Acts, and he tells Titus to set up elders in every place. In the Christian community, you have these men who are identified as responsible leaders that you need to put in office as leaders. Uh, in other words, give them the authority to shepherd the flock of God, to take care of people, and to teach. Um, now, presbyteros is uh, almost always somebody who is connected with uh, teaching and defending truth. So they're to be raising the Word of God up and teaching it to the people. Clearly stated in uh, Titus and Timothy is this concept that the elders were to be people who were defending doctrine uh, and defending truth. They were to be people who were teaching people about Jesus. Now, every Christian is supposed to be teaching people about Jesus. You are supposed to be teaching people about Jesus. You are supposed to be a community of believers who are all teaching the gospel to other people, living out truth and defending what is true. When we have an elder, um, they, number one, they have to meet these requirements that are in these passages. Number two, time does not make an elder. Just because somebody has been around a long time, it doesn't make them an elder. You don't get to be a saint overnight. Nobody goes to sleep one morning and then wakes up holy. Uh, just because that is true, it, it takes time to become a godly person. It does not necessarily mean that because you've been around a long time, you are a godly person. The reality is that a lot of people have been around for ages and they're horrible people. So we need to make sure that we put people in leadership who not only have been around a long time, they are also godly in their character and in their demeanor and in how they and they are wise and discerning and uh, diligent workers. Three, we want to make sure that they're able to teach the Bible. If they're in an elder position, they need to be able to teach and handle Scripture. And some of that, again, comes with time and work and effort and learning and training. And so in your congregation, uh, teach your people, if you're a pastor or you're a leader or a Sunday school teacher, teach your people to handle the Bible well, and you will find yourself raising up elders. Now, just a caution to those of you who are seeking to identify pastors, leaders, elders, uh, or lay leaders in your church, I just want to caution you, don't put a person in an office until you have the elder to fill that office. You see, sometimes in church ministry, we decide that we're going to put somebody in a place just because we need to fill the role. But the reality is, if you don't have somebody to fill the role, you shouldn't have the role, period. Give it time. Wait on the Lord. He's been good up to this point. He will be good forever. I hope that cleared up some. If it just made you more confused, forget I said it. Thanks for joining me in the deep end. Now go get to work.